Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Jay Liu. Jay did his master's at the Shanghai Institute of Organic Chemistry, working under the supervision of Professor Dawei Ma. He subsequently came to the Max Planck Institute to complete his PhD in the Waldman Group, where he currently works as a postdoc. And from there, I'll hand it over to you, Jay. Thank you very much for joining us today. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Matthew, for that introduction. Today, I will share with you the story of total synthesis of acetine. The natural products are attractive research items because of the highly challenging structures and their interesting bioactivities. But for me, the structural complexity matters the most. Acetine belongs to a huge class of natural products, diterpeno and alkaloid. And as indicated by their names, these classes of natural products have a close relationship with diterpenes. Chlorine and acetine are two diterpene classes. The difference between the structure is the abridged scaffold. It was believed that these two structures can be transformed via one-two migration. When the nitrogen was incorporated into the whole scaffold, followed by the cyclization, vetogen and acetine are generated. C20-C7 bond formation could enable the napoline and denatotene respectively. If the denatotene undergoes the 1-2 migration, C19-C18 diterpenoid alkaloids can be achieved. And bond formation between C20 and C14 enables hydatines, and the nitrogen C6 bond formation can afford the most caged scaffold hydatines. As we can see from the proposed biogenesis of diterpenoid alkaloids, artisans are at the center of the map. And my plan is to make this compound class and diversify the advanced intermediate to reach different types of diterpenoid alkaloids. The biggest motivation for me to work on the synthesis of diterpenoid alkaloids came from David Gein's work, especially his legendary total synthesis of nominee. Nominee is so caged that his disconnection ends with very simple planar structures. The once three dipolar cyclization and DSR reaction efficiently afforded the highly advanced intermediate, and at last, nominee was synthesized within only 15 steps. After 15 years, his work still inspired a lot of synthetic attempts in the field of diterpenoid alkaloids. When I saw his total synthesis, there was almost no space for improvement, but other classes haven't been synthesized yet, and this might be an opportunity for me. And then I started the synthesis of other diterpenoid alkaloids. Many total syntheses were reported during my synthesis of diterpenoid alkaloids. I did not realize that there were so many groups working on this topic, especially in Shanghai Institute. There were three groups working on the total synthesis of diterpenoid alkaloids in the same floor. The first case is the phone's nature work followed by Qin's synthesis of acupurpurin. Then Qin reported a biomimetic synthesis based on a reported advanced intermediate. In the same year, Xu's group reported the synthesis of an even more advanced natural product, spiromine. And then the continuous stories were reported by Sapon's group. Just before the submission of our work, Zhang's group reported the synthesis of another hexene natural product. And then Ang Li and our synthesis work was reported almost at the same time. And after the synthesis of azetine, another seven total synthesis were reported. So as you can see, the huge pressure also inspired me a lot to propose some novel disconnections in the synthesis of diterpenoid alkaloids. And from my point of view, the most challenging part in the synthesis of diterpenoid alkaloids is how to install the correct oxidation states at C20 position. My answer is to install a nitride group at this site. Navarin C and Azetine were chosen as the final targets. They can be simplified to scaffold 8 and 9 respectively. 
then 9 could be transformed into 8 via reductive coupling. Compound 9 can be further simplified into dinitrile compound 10. The bicyclic octane can be achieved via the intramolecular DS adder reaction. And then the caged scaffold was simplified to the cyclohexane structure with continuous three stereo centers. A rarely explored methodology was applied in the synthesis of this intermediate. Under the Grignard reagent, compound 14 will be first deprotonated and then chelate with another equivalent of Grignard reagent, and then the intramolecular 1 4 addition will be triggered ending with the caged intermediate 17b. Diverse stereochemistry can be achieved by varying the properties of the electrophiles. When acetyl electrophiles were used, they will react at the opposite position of the C-magnesium bond. And then we started the synthesis of the acetine. Compound 14 can be achieved using Luch reduction and Noyori Asymmetric hydrogenation can afford the compound 14 in moderate yield and enantial selectivity. And then the tandem addition of Grignard reagent followed by trapping with acetyl chloride afforded the intermediate 13 in excellent selectivity and good yield. However, the isolation of pure 13 proved to be problematic because of the impurities caused by the Grignard reagent. So the sodium boring hydride was added secondarily to the reaction mixture to afford a mixture of secondary alcohol 23 in 61% yield. The dehydration by Martin suffering works very well, followed by the TBAF deprotection to give the compound 12 in 74% yield. The following oxidative dearomatization and intramolecular DS adder reaction reacted very well to give 88% yield of the tetracyclic intermediate. Then, four steps were used to simplify the structure and 24 was reached. To install the quaternary center at C4 position, Van Leeuwen reaction was used. This reaction is especially used to transform the ketone into a nitrile. And under the standard condition, 25 was obtained. Then deprotonation followed by the methylation afforded the final intermediate in 68% yield. Then we started the ending game of the synthesis of acetate. In the previous study of the oxidation of compound 26, oxidation at C19 position was observed. That is why it is so challenging to synthesize the acetine with the amine at C20 position. This reaction actually inspired me a lot and finally led to the discovery of synthetic route below. C19 is less hindered compared with the C20 position. So any reactions should take place first at C19 position. And our target is to have higher oxidation state at C20 rather than C19. So why not try the reductive conditions? We incorporated the highest oxidation state at both C19 and C20 position. And after the reduction, C19 reacted first so that higher oxidation states at C20 was achieved. And this is why the dinitrile intermediate was planned. As we expected, the reduction at C19 position took place first to give the amine and then attack the nitrile group intramolecularly to give the amine 28. And then, after many trials of reduction conditions, we found the amine can be smoothly reduced on the liquid ammonium condition. Actually, the 6 amino piperidine was obtained after the reduction, but because of the workup of the reaction, the amine was then formed. Very interestingly, apart from the formation of compound 9 in 24% yield, 32 was observed. This is very weird because neutral double bond should be stable under the lithium liquid ammonium condition. 
We even increased the amount of lithium, however, there was almost no change of the ratio between 9 and 32. So we concluded that the reduction of the double bond was enabled by the intramolecular reduction. After the reduction, the newly generated radical can be further reduced, which is path B to give the unsaturated compound 9. However, the radical can also attack the double bond to give the scaffold 30, which can undergo the ritual manage reaction to give the amidine 31. And this amidine can be further reduced to the structure 32. And based on the compound 32, two-step manipulation afforded the compound 33 in 91% yield. And after the allylic oxidation, hydrating 7, were synthesized using five steps from the advanced intermediate. Then we started the synthesis of hydrogen type compounds. The first task is to enable the bond formation between C20 and C14. Here, a HAT reaction was used. In the previous study, the ketone can serve as a radical acceptor. And in this synthesized nitrile was first time to be used as a radical acceptor in HAT reaction. And finally, compound 43 was obtained in 68% yield. Because of the rigid scaffold, partial reduction was also observed. And then we started the most challenging part of the whole synthesis, that is to manipulate the functional groups to form the piperidine. And fortunately, under the hydrogenation condition, the tandem reduction can give the desired product 8. And to be noted, when methanol was used, the formation of methylated product 45 can also be observed. After the hydrogenation, the reductive amination was done in the same port. And after the deprotection of the keta, compound 46 was isolated in 72% yield using two steps. The structure of 46 was also confirmed by the X-ray analysis. Then, four steps sequence enabled the synthesis of Nabrin C. However, its spectra did not fit with the reported one. So, we can only claim that we finished the synthesis of the proposed structure of Nabrin C using seven steps from the advanced intermediate. So here, let's have a summary of the total synthesis work. We finished the first total synthesis of acetine and the proposed structure of Nabrin C. The synthesis featured a port economy reaction, which avoided the work for purification. A previously neglected chelation-controlled diastereic selective addition was first used in the synthesis of complex natural products. The synthesis also featured the strategic use of cascade reaction in the manipulation of functional groups, for example, the synthesis of C20ME and the final piperidine in Nabrin C scaffold. And most importantly, a first HAT reaction between alkene and nitrile was reported. The whole synthetic route is very efficient and different diterpenol and alkaloids can be reached very fast from the dinitrile intermediate. And at last, I would like to thank my master supervisor, Professor Da Wei Ma, and also my PhD supervisor, Professor Herbert Wadman. As I mentioned before, natural products were very impressive to me because of their complex structures. We have to admit that no matter how complex natural product is, chemists can definitely find a way to make it. But after we synthesize it, what's next? To answer this question, I came to Professor Wadman's group working on the artificial evolution of natural products, which are termed as pseudo-natural products. And I think this is a great opportunity for the chemists, especially those working on the natural product chemistry. And at last, thank Matthew again for organizing. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Jay for a very nice talk. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.